Summary of a History of the World in Six Glasses by Tom Standage. Standage's book is an overview of world history through six of the most popular drinks of all time, beer, wine, spirits, coffee, tea, and Coca-Cola. The author starts by talking about the history of beer. The agricultural revolution, the most important event in the history of early society, led to the creation of beer. Nomadic people living in the Fertile Crescent, basically the area between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in the Middle East, around 50,000 years ago learned how to plant seeds and turn crops into food that could be eaten, such as cereals, breads, and other foods. Farmers in the past learned how to make beer by letting wheat grains soak in water for a long time. This is now called fermentation. As the years went by, early nations kept making beer and drinking it. Beer was seen as a holy drink that could bring regular people closer to the gods. In Mesopotamia, one of the oldest societies we know about, beer was seen as a sign of civilization, and a man who could drink beer was seen as a man who had grown up. Beer is a symbol of health, life, and happiness in many old stories, such as those of the Mesopotamians, Egyptians, and Sumerians. By the time of the Sumerians, beer was no longer just for the rich. People from all walks of life liked it, and some were even buried with it. Even now, beer is seen as a sign of simplicity, friendship, and equality, which is why the phrase let's get a beer is still used. Like beer, no one knows how wine came to be. Still, people have known for many thousands of years how to make wine by crushing grapes and letting the juice ferment in warm weather. Since at least 870 BCE, when the Assyrian king Ashurnasirpal II served wine at a huge feast to celebrate the building of a new capital for his kingdom, wine has been the drink of culture, style, and elegance. Ancient Greece was the first place where wine was a big part of everyday life. In ancient Greece, wine was seen as the drink of culture. It was even said that Greeks only became people when they learned how to make wine from grapes. Men who owned land in Greece showed off their intelligence and taste by drinking wine at big indoor parties called symposia, which women and poor people weren't allowed to attend. Socrates, who started Western philosophy, saw the debate as a symbol for all of society. People could see how smart, strong, and determined they were by drinking wine. Wine was still a very popular drink in the Roman Empire, which took over from Greece as the dominant culture in Mediterranean Europe. The Romans used the land they owned to grow the best and most delicious drinks. Even poor Romans liked wine, which was thought to have healing powers and was drunk by emperors. Wine was an important part of Roman culture. Everyone could drink wine, but expensive wine was a way for the rich to show off their power. So, wine was both a sign of equality and of being wealthy. Even after the Roman Empire fell, wine was still popular in Europe, mostly because it was an important part of Christian ceremonies. Standage skips ahead to the 1400s, which is the start of the age of imperialism. Western European countries like Portugal and Spain, and then France and England, spent a lot of money on exploring the ocean by ship. The result was the discovery of the New World, which turned out to be the Americas, where sugarcane sources were found. Europeans took advantage of these new resources and the centuries-old method of brewing to make rum, a strong boozy drink. Rum became popular among the people who moved to North America when it was controlled by the British. It became so popular that it may have had something to do with the American Revolution. By the 1700s, the black market for rum was huge. The British government tried to stop this by raising taxes on sugar and molasses, which are used to make rum. However, these taxes were a disaster, they made the most powerful and important groups in North America angry and resentful, which helped start the American Revolution. After the American Revolution and the founding of the United States of America, rum became less famous and was replaced by other distilled alcohols like whiskey and bourbon, which are made by fermenting wheat grains or corn. Whiskey and bourbon are still very American drinks. This is in part because Americans wanted to be different from the decadent, elitist Europeans who drank wine. The Enlightenment was a movement that started in Europe in the 1600s. The Enlightenment was a time when empiricism, free speech, 
careful observation, and the slow, careful study of great writings were all celebrated. Standage says that coffee may have been the most important drink of the Enlightenment. Since Islam forbids drinking booze, coffee had been famous in the Muslim world for many hundreds of years. At the end of the Middle Ages, coffee came to Europe because of how well Muslims could trade with each other. Before the Enlightenment, not many people in Europe liked coffee. Europeans during the Age of Enlightenment loved coffee because it helped people focus and gave them energy. These were useful traits in a society that valued intelligence and careful thought. The first places called coffee houses opened in England, then in France. Men could drink coffee and talk about art, politics, and philosophy in coffee houses, which were public places. Many of the most important ideas and events of the Age of Enlightenment happened in coffee houses, from the discovery of Newton's rules of physics to the start of the French Revolution. Coffee is still the drink of choice for smart people and people who think outside the box. Like coffee, tea was popular in places other than the West for a long time before it caught on in Europe. Most likely, the Chinese were the first people to drink tea. Tea is described in many of the most important works of Chinese culture and is praised for its ability to help people think and feel better. In the 1500s, when tea was brought to Europe, China was much more artistically and intellectually advanced than Europe. Over the next 200 years, Europe grew to like tea, and Britain in particular grew to love it. By the time of the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century, when inventions like the steam engine were made and spread through Europe, tea was the most famous drink in Britain. The British Empire relied on China a lot because its people liked tea so much. This led to the Opium Wars in the 1830s. The purpose of these efforts was to make sure that Britain had a good trade balance with China and could keep buying a lot of tea without going into debt. Once they knew they could always get tea, the British kept drinking it. Even now, most of the people who drink tea in the world live in places that were once part of the British Empire. These places include Australia, New Zealand, and India. Standage says that Coca-Cola was the most famous drink of the 20th century. He says that it was a sign of America's power and its belief in capitalism. In the second half of the 19th century, however, Coca-Cola was just one of hundreds of tonics that were sold in America. John Pemberton made and sold the first Coca-Cola, which was made from the cocoa plant's leaves and the cola plant's seeds. As a medicine, Coca-Cola became very famous, but by the 1890s, Asa Candler had changed Coke from a drug to a regular drink. Despite competition from Pepsi and the start of the Great Depression, Coke stayed popular through the first third of the 20th century. During World War II, Coca-Cola execs offered to send a bottle of their product to every American fighter. This made Coke a popular drink around the world, and it became known as an American drink. Coca-Cola opened factories in Africa, Asia, and Europe because of this promotion. During the Cold War, Coke became a uniting point for people who didn't like America being a leader. This is because Coke has clear ties to America and the American military. Communists called American foreign policy Coca colonization, and for 40 years, the USSR wouldn't let Coca-Cola pass through its lines. Still, after the Soviet Union fell apart in the early 1990s, Coke was still the most popular drink in the world. Standage comes to the conclusion that, for better or worse, Coke is the drink of the 20th century, which is often called the American century. In the end of the book, Standage says that the most important drink of the future might be the most basic one, water. Most of the developed world takes clean water for granted, but there are big parts of the world where there is no clean water. This causes dangerous diseases to spread and has already caused war. Standage says that the 1967 Six-Day War was partly caused by Israel and Palestine's different access to clean river water. In the end, the role of water in geopolitics is a strong and touching example of Standage's claim that the history of the world is the history of its drinks. About the author Tom Standage grew up in London and then went to Oxford University. After getting his computer science degree from Oxford, Standage worked as a freelancer for a number of British magazines and newspapers, such as The Economist and The Guardian. 
Standage was interested in the history of the United States and the United Kingdom in the 19th century. In 1998, he wrote his first book, The Victorian Internet, which did well. At a time when intellectuals and journalists were praising the newly popular internet for changing the way the world works, Standage came to a more humorous and cynical conclusion, the internet was a big step forward for humanity, but it wasn't as big of a deal as the invention of the electric telegraph more than a century earlier. Standage was able to write more controversial articles for books because of the success of the Victorian internet. In 2005, he wrote a book called A History of the World in Six Glasses. In it, he said that the history of people could be told by looking at the drinks that were most popular at different times. Standage has written five other non-fiction books, and he is the deputy editor of The Economist. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.